In this video, I'm going to be showing how to perform an AMP script loop in a common use case with an email, either a transactional order confirmation or a band and card email. We'll be covering how to build a virtual row set based on a provided string, how to loop through that row set, and to do lookups to a relational product table to gather information to display within the email. Now for this example, I've got two tables that I'm going to set up. <clears throat> one is going to be the relational table that will store the product information, which is this one. It will start off with the SKU, which is the unique identif identifier for the product, a name, a description, and a price. The second table is the actual data set that we'll be sending the email to, which will contain information about the subscriber and what products need to display in their email. For this example, I've got their email address and a field called products, which is a string that includes SKU numbers separated by commas. The delimiter could be a pipe, could be a caret, in this case it's going to be a comma. I've set up these tables in exact target under my demo account. I've already imported the data. I've called one purchase subs, which includes the subscription data, and products with SKU that will hold the product data. A lot of times, clients like to provide feeds of data to populate these tables, so they're always up to date. In this example, it's, just, it's basically going to be static. Create an example email with the AMP script, basically a plain text email. Now, obviously, you can use HTML uh, fully designed emails, but for showing you how to use this AMP script, we're just going to use a plain text email. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable to for the products field. Now, I'm getting that from the subscriber table right here. So this is going to be contain the string of product SKUs. So now that I've got the string, I want to be able to build a row set to loop through. So I want to take all of those SKU numbers and I want to be able to create a row set out of that. So we're going to use the function build row set from string. So I'm going to actually set a variable for the row set. And as the function indicates, you set the string as the first piece of data. And the second is actually the delimiter. We know that the delimiter is going to be a comma. So now I've got the row set, and it's time to build the loop. So the syntax for an AMP group loop is very similar to other languages. We're going to start with an index, which I'm just going to use i. You could use really whatever. But as long as you don't, if you're having loops within loops, it's, it's best to just change those letters uh, to make them unique. So I'm going to start with uh, index 1, 2, and we want to count as many rows as there are, so we're going or we're going to have it loop through as many rows as there as it can find. So we're going to set it to the row count of the product row set. So however how many rows it finds in this statement, it's going to loop to that number. And we're going to add the do on there. Now the end of any loop is always a next, but we'll save that. We'll write that later. <clears throat> so the first thing we want the loop to do is to pull the product skew, the first product skew. So we're going to set the product skew variable. And we're because the row set will actually just be a number and then another number as another row. So the rows really only contains one field per row. I'm going to combine my statements. I'm going to um, combine the row and the field statement together. And I'm going to set the row to whatever the index is. So if we're on row one, I want row I want one to appear here. And if we're on if it's looping around, it's on row two. I want two to appear here. And the field I'm setting to one because there's only one field uh, in this row set, and each row is only going to take one field, and that is the SKU number. So I don't have to identify anything but a one here. So that's going to pull the SKU number for that particular row. Now I'm going to want to look up that SKU into the product table 
to actually pull the rest of the information. So now that I've got the SKU number, I'm going to use the lookup rows function. So let's set our SKU variable, SKU lookup variable, lookup rows function. Now this function, uh, you need to identify the data extension that you're looking up into. So that data extension is called products with SKU. And then you want to uh, set the where clause. So we're going to be comparing the SKU field in this data extension with the SKU we just pulled, which is now a variable called product SKU. So now we've uh, done a lookup, and now we've either we've either pulled one row or several rows, depending on if there's more than one row containing that SKU number. Um, <clears throat> for this example, we really only want to pull the first one, so that's how we're gonna we're gonna let it play out. Um, I'm going to set an if then statement to basically uh, fail if it doesn't find it if it doesn't find that SKU number in the lookup. So what I'm basically saying is look up that SKU in the table. If you find one, at least one row, then do the next set of lines. And then I'll have an else statement to basically display an error or uh, a message that says <clears throat> we can't find this product in the database um, as an else. This is not really common in abandoned card or, or receipt emails. We normally we just skip the row, but I'm actually going to display a message just to show you how it works. So if it does find that one row, or at least one row, we're going to first set the row variable. And we're going to put, pull the, the, the first row. So if it finds two rows with the same SKU number, which, you know, again, it's not a, a common use case, um, I'm just telling it to pull the first row. It's required syntax for this function anyway. So now that we've got the row in this table, so we've, we've, we've identified the SKU number, so now we've got this row in virtual memory. We want to pull these individual uh, pieces of data. So now I want to set the name variable to the field in that row set, in that row, and we called it name. I'm going to copy this a couple times. So we've got uh, description, call that DESC, and we've got price. All right, so now we actually have all of our fields. Now I want to escape out of my AMP script to actually display either text or HTML. So now I'm going to, this is now part of my uh, email itself, so I'm going to just want to display what the SKU number is first. And then uh, I can actually put the index in so we can show uh, what part of the loop it's on. So let's just call this uh, index. This is just for troubleshooting really. Uh, then I'm going to want to display the name, the description, and the price. Now I want to get back and I, I want to uh, set the else statement as part, part of this if then uh, statement. So I want to get back into my AMP script. So if it doesn't find the product in the database, we want it to display an error. And then I'm going to close that statement. And the last thing I have to do, no, so now it's actually gone through the loop once, so we've uh, pulled the information. Now I want to start over. <clears throat> I've added a couple of uh, hard returns in there. So the next I will basically send the loop all the way back to the statement right here. So it's looping between these, this line 6 and line 28. 
So we have a couple of things going on here. We've got <clears throat> building a virtual row set, we've got a lookup, and we've got a loop. So I'm going to put this into a plain text email, actually uh, have it set up already. Now for my, for my demo account, I actually have to put some required information to get a send preview. Now what I was able to do in here, I actually put a, a product ID or SKU number in here that didn't exist to show that the error would come through. Now if I send preview this, I'm going to want to preview it against the actual data that we imported for the subscribers. And that's going to be right here. So we've got our four records that match this table right here. Now because this is a plain text email, I have to go to the text tab to see the results. So <clears throat> 2001 looks like it's correct. 2001 is a ball. This is a ball 299. It's pulled all the information. Second record. It's pulled two products. 2001, 2004, which is a ball and a computer. Okay, it's pulled up correct information. The third, it's gonna be three products, a stick, a hammer, and a computer. And the fourth record showed the error. So we have the 2004, 2003, and 2012. 2012 doesn't exist, so it gives me the error this product's not in the database. And there you have it. That is a common use case scenario in using AMP script loops and lookups in Salesforce Marketing Cloud.